Hey everyone, hope you're having an awesome Friday and thank you again for tuning into Vintage Pokey Openings, a YouTube channel in which we open sealed Wizards of the Coast era Pokemon products. We've got a really cool opening today. It's gonna to be another booster pack opening and we're gonna be cracking open a heavy jungle booster pack. And you can see here, we've got the Wigglytuff artwork. And you know, I've opened a lot of jungle on this channel, so I kind of wanted to stay away from jungle in the future just because there's so many jungle and fossil packs out there for that matter. But I found this for a really good deal. It was only, I think, $220, and it was weighed at 21.3 grams, so it was very heavy. I'm pretty confident there's going to be a holographic card in this pack. So I picked it up for a pretty good deal. These heavy, even unlimited jungle packs I've seen go for $400 and up on eBay. Kind of just depends on how the auction plays out, but they're definitely worth more than $220. So funny enough, I actually ended up selling it to my girlfriend. She bought it off me because she wanted to open a pack. Uh, she's really never opened a vintage pack before, and she really likes a lot of the cards in the jungle set. And so she thought this would be a great way to break into uh, opening Pokemon cards. So. She's gonna be opening this pack today. I personally would love to see a Eevee Evolution pulled, maybe a Holographic Snorlax or a Holographic Pidgeot. Pidgeot is actually my personal favorite in this set and I've been wanting one for a long time. Uh, what do you wanna pull, Kristen? I think I really wanna pull a Wigglytuff. It's always been one of my favorites and I think it'd be kinda of cool with matching the artwork on the set too. So fingers crossed we get one of our favorites. Yeah, absolutely. And another really good card in this set is a Holographic Kangaskhan. If you can get it in a PSA 10, if it's a PSA 9, it's really not worth too much more than any of the other cards. But if you can get a PSA 10 Kangaskhan, it's a very low population PSA 10 card, so it's really valuable. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the pack and take a look. All right, so the first card we have here is an Execute, and I believe the Hollow is the third one from the, or the fourth one from the back, and you can see it's a little bolder than the others, so that does look like a Hollow to me. So we're gonna go ahead and put that at the end here. And Kristen, oh, perfect. One of the cards we were just talking about, actually. Uh, a Butterfree. I personally never even pulled a Butterfree myself out of all the jungle packs I've opened. This is probably the best uncommon that you can get. If it was a first edition Butterfree, we would have the chance at getting the first edition D error card, which is kind of like in the first edition logo that typically shows here. A little print bubble makes it look like it's a D instead of a number one. This is an unlimited Butterfree, obviously, so um, it's not gonna have the D error, but it is probably the most valuable uncommon, as well as the Rapid Ash, which is also an error card if you can pull it. Um, the stage information up the top right here is incorrect on the Rapid Ash, so maybe we'll pull that as well. Maybe, I am also noticing the centering on this card looks to be pretty good. We may wanna put this one in a sleeve. Yeah, it is pretty good. I'll put that in a sleeve for you, Kristen, if you'd like. Thank you. All right, and then our next one is a uh, Weepin' Bell. Not super popular. And then next we have a Pharaoh. Funny enough, I actually have one of these right now in my run of Pokemon Yellow that I'm working on. Our first common is an Execute. Next we have the Pokeball Trainer card. As much as trainer cards are, are not typically coveted, this is one of my favorites just because it's that classic Pokeball artwork and it's the only trainer card in the jungle set, funny enough. You can see it's 64 out of 64 at the bottom right-hand corner of the card. So it's the only one in the set, very interesting. Not sure why they did it that way. Next, we have a Rhyhorn. Ooh, Jigglypuff, that's a really good uncommon. I'll go ahead and take that off to awesome. the side. Centering is a bit skewed on it, but still one of the best commons in the set. Next, we have an Oddish. We also have a Cubone. One of the other big common hits in this set would be Pikachu and or Eevee. Meowth is a pretty good one too, actually. So I think after this one, are we at the hollow? I think we are. Okay. Well, let's see what we got. Here we go. Oh <gasps> my goodness. One of the best holographics in the set, especially if you can get it in a PSA 10, we have a Vaporeon. Now, unfortunately, this one is not going to get a PSA 10 just because you can see the centering is really skewed on it. It's, it's really heavy up at the top. 
But other than that, it looks really great. Let's bring the hollow foil really close up to the camera and yeah. see if there's any print lines. I'm not noticing any at first. And I'm looking from the side and I don't really see any either. That was the big issue with my holographic Vaporeon that I pulled out of the Water Blast theme deck, was the centering actually was pretty good on it, but it had a really big print line up at the top. Take a look at the back of it as well. Okay. And the centering on the back pretty much mirrors the front. It's a little bit skewed, but absolutely no whitening on the corners whatsoever, which is really cool. One thing I noticed, Kristen, if you wouldn't mind flipping back to the yeah. front, I think... Oh, no, never mind. I thought I saw something out of the ordinary, but I was just imagining things. <laughs> wow, really, really nice card. I'm just gonna grab it for a second here, and I'm gonna put it in a, in a sleeve yes. for us. So funny enough, not one of the ones we predicted, but super really happy with an Eevee Evolution. Mm -hmm. Definitely, out of the three EV evolutions, Vaporeon is, well, they kind of they kind of shift here and there. Um, sometimes Vaporeon will sell more than like Jolteon, just because it's kind of difficult to get into PSA 10. They're, the Vaporeon is notorious for print lines. Um, obviously, like you can see here, the centering on this one is really skewed, but this one doesn't have any print lines, which is awesome. I would probably rather have a card with a little bit of skewed centering as opposed to print lines. Um, but I would say it probably goes Jolteon is the most expensive. I'm not really sure why. And then Vaporeon is closely behind. Sometimes it still does edge out Jolteon. And then lastly, we also have uh, Flareon, which that's my personal favorite EV evolution. I guess maybe that's the least valuable of the three, but all of them are some of the most valuable cards in the set. You could argue they're in the top three with the exception of Snorlax, if you can get Snorlax in a PSC 10. So once again, just a beautiful, beautiful Vaporeon card. This one will definitely be sent off to PSA for grading and we'll see what it gets. So thank you guys for tuning into today's video. Uh, Kristen, I'm sure you're happy with this poll. Um, and look forward to our next video in which we open some more Sealed Wizards of the Coast product and uh, we'll go from there. Have a good rest of your Friday.